You're listening to a lecture by the St. Jerome Center for Catechesis, a Catholic website dedicated to providing Catholics and non-Catholics with material about the Catholic faith. In this lecture in the Patristic series, we will examine St. Clement of Rome. Hi, and welcome to our lecture series on patristics. My name is Michael Lofton. Today we're going to go over Pope St. Clement of Rome. Now, he was the fourth bishop of Rome, that is, the fourth pope. Some believe that he reigned approximately from 80 A.D. until 98 A.D., right at the end of the first century. Some suggest that he was a convert of St. Peter himself. Ecclesiastical writers like Tertullian in the early church says he was ordained by Peter himself. Others like Eusebian and Origen in the early church say that he was the very Clement mentioned in Paul's letter to the Philippians. Now, Pope St. Clement is especially known for his epistle to the Corinthians, the very Corinthians that Paul, nearly 30 or 40 years previously, had written to. Um, so here was St. Clement of Rome writing to the very congregation that an apostle had written to in the New Testament. This epistle was written because some in the Corinthian church began to dissent from the lawful priests who had authority over them. And so Pope St. Clement I wrote to them, urging them to obey their pastors. Now the patristic scholar William A. Jurgens dates the epistle to roughly 80 A.D., now, from what we know, according to church history, the Corinthians were even reading this epistle a century after it was written. So we know that the Corinthian church received Pope St. Clement's epistle very well. Now, Pope St. Clement is noteworthy for his teachings on the authority of the Pope. I want to read to you an excerpt from First Clement to the Corinthians um, that addresses this matter of the papacy. He writes as the bishop of Rome to the, Corinthians, to the Corinthians, saying, Owing to the sudden and repeated calamities and misfortunes which have befallen us, we must acknowledge that we have been somewhat tardy in turning our attention to the matters in dispute among you, beloved, and especially that abominable, un, abominable and unholy sedition, alien and foreign to the elect of God, which a few rash and self-willed persons have inflamed to such madness that your venerable and illustrious name, worthy to be loved by all men, has been greatly defamed. Accept our counsel, and you will have nothing to regret. Regret, If anyone disobey the things which have been said by him, that is God, through us, let them know that they will involve themselves in transgression and in no small danger. You will afford us joy and gladness if being obedient to the things which we have written to you through the Holy Spirit, you will root out the wicked passions of jealousy. Now, this is clearly significant because it's the earliest testament of Roman intervention on ecclesiastical matters. Here you have the Pope, the Bishop of Rome, in the first century, while the Apostle John was still alive, writing to the Corinthians, telling them to straighten up, um, stop dissenting from your lawful priests, start obeying them, and if you don't obey me in this matter, you will be involved in a great, great sin. So this also demonstrates that the Bishop of Rome has jurisdiction over the Eastern Churches because uh, the Corinthian congregation, of course, is part of uh, the East, whereas the Bishop of Rome is part of the West. So this goes to show that uh, there was papal primacy even in the first century where the Bishop of Rome had jurisdiction over the Eastern Churches. Now, Pope Clement is also important because in this same epistle, he uses the term layman which is, uh, of course, a distinction between the laity and the priesthood. So it shows us very early in the first century, there was already a distinction between the laity and the ministerial priesthood. And this is very noteworthy, especially for Protestants who may hear this, uh, to note that even in the first century, there was a distinction between the laity and the priests. He says, these things, therefore, being manifest to us, since we look into the depths of the divine knowledge, it behooves us to do all things in their proper order, which the Lord has commanded us to perform at, at stated times. He enjoined offerings to be presented and service to be performed to him, and that not thoughtlessly or irregularly, but at the appointed times and hours. 
where and by whom he desires these things to be done. He himself has fixed by his own supreme will, in order that all things being piously done according to his good pleasure may be accepted, acceptable unto him. Those, therefore, who present their offerings, and some translations here say sacrifices, at the appointed times are accepted and blessed. For inasmuch as they follow the laws of the Lord, they sin not, for his own peculiar services are assigned to the high priest, and their own place is prescribed to the priests, and their own special ministrations devolve on the Levites. The layman is bound by the laws that pertain to the layman. So again, this clearly testifies to a distinction between priests and the laity, the ministerial priesthood and the general priesthood of all believers. Now, Pope St. Clement is also uh, noteworthy because he attests to biblical inerrancy in First Clement. Bibl biblical inerrancy is essentially the doctrine that there are no errors in sacred scripture. It's free from all error. And of course, that has to be the case since the Holy Spirit inspired the biblical authors to write that which they wrote. So, of course, there cannot be any errors. And Pope St. Clement confirms this as he says, you are fond of contention, brethren, and full of zeal about things which do not pertain to salvation. Look carefully into the scriptures, which are the true utterances of the Holy Spirit. Observe that nothing of an unjust or counterfeit character is written to them. This is a very important quote from the first century, and it would be nice if many in the church today would read this and take note that there are no unjust or counterfeit characters written in sacred scripture. So this shows us that biblical inerrancy is not limited to just matters of faith and morals whenever scripture speaks about such things. It encompasses everything written in sacred scripture. So, I hope that you enjoyed this very brief lecture on Pope St. Clement. I hope that you read the epistle to the Corinthians, and I hope also that you look forward to our next lecture on St. Polycarp. Thank you for listening to this lecture in the series of Patristics. If you would like to know more about the SJCC, please visit stjeromecenter.com.